Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today we'll have our lesson number 15. Lesson number 15. In the series of 20 lessons, lesson number 15 and 17 in the series of 20 lessons on ratios and proportions. And today's are day number 130. The problem is already on the blackboard. This problem is something that I gave you yesterday on day number 129. Yesterday we did a very similar problem, uh, a simpler version of the problem that you see on the blackboard. Let's take a look at the problem. It says four people, we have four people, we are told four people R, S, T and U work on the project. Four people work on the project. We are told that they put in the hours in the ratio of they put in the hours in the ratio of two to three to four to five. Two to three to four to five. As you can see, it's quite creative. We are further told that one person, one person works 60 hours. One person, we are told, put in 60 hours on this in this project. Uh, based on that, based on these facts, the fact that they worked in the ratio of two to three to four to five, and one person put in 60 hours, the question simply is which of the following could not possibly be the total number of hours worked? And the answer choices are 420, 280, 210, 168 and 140. What I want you to do right now is that if you have not done the problem ahead of time, if you, could, if you have not done the problem ahead of time, if you, had, if you had not watched yesterday's video already, then I want you to pause the video, I want you to solve the problem yourself, listen carefully, I want you to solve the problem yourself. If you can figure it out, if you can solve it yourself, great, brilliant, and then resume the video and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. In the event that you have some trouble, in the event that you are unable to solve the problem or if you do not know where to begin there, then watch yesterday's video first, solve the simpler version of the problem first, which has only three people, and then do this one yourself. You, you will always find that you will get a lot more out of these videos if you do the problems yourself first, even if you get it wrong, even if you have some trouble with that. Do you understand? I'll give you five seconds to be able to pause and unpause the video. Okay, I'll get out of your way. One more time, four people R, S, T and U, they work on a project in the ratio of 2 to 3 to 4 to 5. One person works 60 hours, which of the following could not be the number of hours work. Well, here we go. Oh, I should have raised this thing before. I forgot all about it. This is the work from yesterday. This was all the work from yesterday. This is how the problem looks like. So let's, let's get going. We have four people, R, S, T and U. R, S, T and U. And we know that they work in the ratio of 2 to 3 to 4 to 5. 2 to 3 to 4 to 5. Answer choice A says, answer choice A says 420. 420. Well, the very first thing we need to figure out very first thing you need to figure out is the fact that one person worked two parts, the other person worked three parts, the third person worked four parts, and fifth, fourth person worked five parts. How many total parts are there? How many total parts are there? Two plus three is five, five plus five is ten, ten plus four is fourteen. So it looks like it's fourteen, fourteen are the total number of parts. In order for them to have worked, in order for them to have worked for 40, 420 hours, we need to figure out 420 times what number is 14. We know 42 divided by 14, I don't know why I'm making such a first, is 14 times 3. 14 times 3 is 42, which means in order for this to be true, it has to be 14, 14 number is the total, total parts, times 30, times 30. In other words, each part is worth 30 hours. Now, if each part is worth 30 hours, then given the fact that one person has worked 60 hours and each part is worth 30 hours, if the total number of hours happens to be 420, then we're looking for a person, there has to be one person who has worked two parts. And this right there, 2 times 30 is going to give us the 60 hours that we're looking for. So that is possible. Answer choice B says, answer choice B says 280. I'm going to pick up speed now. 280, 28 divided by 14. 28 divided by 14 is 2. So now here, each part is worth 20 hours. Each part is worth 20 hours. If each part is worth 20 hours and one person has worked 60 hours, we, we're looking for somebody who has worked three parts. And that three parts right here, S. S has worked three parts, and each part in this scenario is 20 hours. 
So that is also possible. Let's look at C. C says 210. 210, 21 divided by 14. Oh, 21 divided by 14 is a little tricky. I think it's 15 times the amount. Yes, because 140, 140 is a 10 times the amount, and then 70 is 5 times, and that's 210. So, which means each part is worth 15 hours. 14 times 15, 14 times 15 is 210, which means each part is worth 15 hours. One person, we are told, is worth 60 hours. In order for one person to have worked 60 hours, given the fact that each part is worth 15 hours, we need somebody who has worked four parts. 60 divided by 15 is 4, and that's right there. 4 times 15. In this scenario, it is Mr. T who has worked 60 hours. That is also possible. Let's move on to D. I'm going to pick up a little bit of speed. 168. 168. We need to divide, we need to divide 168 by 14. Let's do it here. 168 divided by 14 is not as bad as you think. How many 14s in a 1? One has no 14s. One has no 14s. That one goes and joins a 6, becomes 16. And 16 has one 14. One 14 we take away. Once we take away one 14 from 16, we, are, we have a remainder of 2. That 2 goes and joins the 8, becomes 28. And 28 has two 14s. 28 has two 14s. Voila. Which means 168 represents 14 times 12. 168 represents 14 times 12. Each part is worth 12 hours now. Given the fact that one person has worked 60 hours and each part is worth 12 hours, we need somebody who has, who has worked 5 parts. And it's right there, Mr. U. Mr. U has 5 parts. He has worked 5 parts and each part is worth 12 hours. So that means it is Mr. U who has worked 60 hours in the scenario that we are depicting in answer choice D. Let's look at E. I wonder what the answer is. The suspense is killing me. I simply cannot brook it. I simply cannot brook it. 140. In order for it, in order for total number of hours to be 140, given the fact that total parts are 100, uh, total parts are 14, in order for total number of hours on the project to be uh, to have worked 100, to, to, to be 140, each part, each part has to work has to be worth 10 hours. Each part has to be worth 10 hours given the fact that they have worked in the ratio of 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, which means that R has worked 20 hours, S has worked 30 hours, T has worked 40 hours, and U has worked 50 hours. As you can see in this scenario, in this scenario, nobody, nobody worked 60 hours. We are told that one person worked 60 hours. This cannot be, this cannot be the total number of hours worked. Which of the following could not be the total number of hours worked by these four people? The answer is 140. Nobody worked. Nobody has worked 60 hours in this scenario. One per first person has worked 20 hours. The second person has worked 30 hours, and then another person 40 hours, and 50 hours. That's it. Nobody has worked 60 hours. Before I close the video and before I completely forget it, let's look at this word broke. I know we learned it. I'm going to look it up and tell you exactly where we learned it in our in our vocabulary lesson. Day number four, what do you know? Vocabulary lesson, vocab, day four. Day four, if you're interested in improving your vocabulary, just type in whichever exam that you're preparing for, GR, GRE vocabulary words, day four, or SAT vocabulary words, day four, whatever it is, GMAT vocabulary words, SAT vocabulary words, just type it in, along with day four, the video will pop right up. Watch that video where we learn the word brook. What does it mean to be able to brook something? To be able to brook something is to be able to tolerate it, to be able to handle it, to be able to stomach it, to be able to endure it. If you cannot endure it, if you cannot tolerate it, if you cannot handle it, if you cannot stomach it, you cannot brook it. The suspense was killing me. I simply could not brook it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.